Hello there, guys. Pearl Jr. here. We have a special guest. Cecil's in the house. <laughs> Cecil's in the house. Everybody always remembers you, Cecil. People are always like, tell Cecil thank you, thank you for all the work that he's done. And, you know, everybody appreciates you so much. Okay, so... Let's get down to Edna. Edna Cook, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Um, Actually, she, I'll be right back. Oh, you'll be right back? Okay, he'll be right back. Thank you, Edna, for the gifts. It's so sweet. She said she was sick during my birthday in May. I hope you're feeling much better. Um, look at the card she gave me. They're getting so creative with cards. This is a card. It collapses like this. And then it opens. You gotta, got, guys got to remember, I'm doing this with one hand. That is so adorable. And she reminds me of my mom because she her handwriting so much like my mommy's handwriting. Thank you, Edna. Edna's a big B. Howard fan. Then she gave me a butterfly. And look, Edna, I wore my butterfly shirt. Ah, it's a little, it's a little tight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Edna, for this. And thank you, Edna, for the beautiful cards and the things that you said in your cards. Thank you so much. And then she gave me this gift, guys. Let me let me just kind of show you. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you. Look at this gift. Look at this. Look. Isn't that cute? It's like a, a cup for my tea. Yeah, so I'm going to make sure I have to drink some tea. Oh, and it's heavy, too. Thank you so much. And it has butterflies on it. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. I'm going to use it. And it comes in this great box with this linen in it. It's really nice. Thank you so much. And then I think this is a little doily here and a spoon and then to clean it a little a little um little uh towel to clean it thank you so much edna wow that is just so sweet thank you you guys are just so wonderful with these gifts my goodness thank you and she you know you guys may not know this but i have a whole segment about brandon howard is he michael's son or not it is really pretty in-depth and it pretty much, well, you guys got to see a live four. It's in a live four. So, Cecil, what did you get? I got this necklace. Oh, Edna gave Cecil a gift, too. Thank you, Edna. Oh, that's nice. And, of course, a, a card. And a card, too. Oh, thank you. Love by God. So, thank you, Edna. You are so sweet. Thank you so, so much for the gift. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, we got to get down to some Michael business, okay? Some Michael Jackson business, because that's why we're all here, right? For the king himself. All right. Um, we, we decided to put A Prisoner of Fame back on Amazon Prime. I know I said it was a suck of bed because you only get uh, five cents an hour. <laughs> so, every time somebody watches it, I'm going to get two pennies, Okay. But sometimes it's not about the money that you make. It's about the exposure that you get. So I want everyone out there to, whenever you have nothing to do or you're bored, just press the, just go to Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Video, and um, um, get A Prisoner of Fame, watch it, or link it to fans. Link it to anybody. Link it wherever you want. Okay, because Amazon Prime is a place where a lot of people can get familiar with the MJ death hoax. Because I don't call him Michael in A Prisoner of Fame. I call him Jack London. And you guys know why Michael used Jack London as one of his aliases. Now, that would be in a live five. It didn't make it into a live four. There's just so much more information, guys. I mean it. There is enough information to do on a live five and then sometimes fans come on and they like where's new info i got 500 videos on youtube <laughs> i got uh four documentaries well five because of the trial and triumph of the king of pop that makes five i have the e-movie book suicide did michael jackson fake his death to save his life 
and I have thousands of posts. So there's plenty of information out there for you guys. So um, all you guys, thank you for the great reviews for Live 4. Um, thank you for telling me I know how to rap. <laughs> right? And it's supposed to be a rap to where one of Michael's nephews, I'm not going to tell you who, you got to watch the documentary, and Michael. So it was written, okay, and it's about the death hoax and faking the death, okay. The audio was removed, so I had to rap because I found it online. A fan helped me find it online. And, you know, I got so many credits of so many fans that um, have helped me throughout the years that are in this um, documentary or that are just good fans that are just good fans um so anyway so before i get into the new stuff the new clues okay uh you guys don't forget alive one two three and four now it's a docu-series and a prisoner of fame okay it's a docu-series all right docu-series all right all right all right okay here we go here we go all right so let, let me see my notes before i get down to um Peter Michael Bobby. Peter Michael Bobby, my buddy, my pal. All right, I'm going to tell a little story first. Um, at the beginning of this death hoax, it's very confusing, right? It was always very confusing because I was like, how is Michael dead and alive at the same time? How does, how does a death exist when a death doesn't exist? How does a death exist when a death doesn't exist, right? And for years, because you got to remember it's 11 years now. So for years... I was um, kind of like, um, uh, um, you know, believing it, but every now and then I would go, hey, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So that's when I came up with um, that he's dead and alive at the same time. That means that somebody else died in his place, okay? That doesn't mean he killed anybody or anything like that. You got to watch the Alive trilogy. It's all in the up and up. I read the contracts. It's all legit. Michael made sure that he broke no laws when it came to faking his death and how he implemented the fake death, okay? Because we know that he told Rabbi Smooley or, and or Dieter Weisner that um, it, he had to disappear. He had to get out of here. People, people were stalking him. So, you know, that's why I wrote the book, Suicide, Did Michael Jackson Fake His Death to Save His Life? Yeah, he did, to escape the haters. But he's still living in this world, so he has to do something, and he think, feels badly about fooling the fans. So that's why I've been sucked into this situation. Well, with Peter Michael Bobby, you guys know that I believe that him and Michael are in cahoots. It's Peter Michael Bobby. They're all the same. They're all one of the same. Bobby's the decoy for Michael. That's, that's the only way that Bobby, Peter Michael Bobby makes sense. The only way, when you consider everything, when you consider everything, that's the only way it makes sense. They're in cahoots and, and Bobby is just the front, the decoy for, for Michael. That's all. Simple. It's an easy thing. And then in Alive 4, I show you guys the actual proof that Michael used a decoy. I show you Michael using a decoy. I show you Michael using a decoy. And Michael's been using decoys since he was a kid. So he's really, really, really good at it. He's been using disguises since he was a child. He's been using aliases since he was a kid. Okay? So we're talking about a mastermind. Okay? Somebody who's really good at what he does. So now that he is supposed to be dead, of course he's going to use them even more and more trickery. So anyway, I don't forget um, certain things that have happened. I remember what happened. I remember, and I can't just go, oh, that doesn't, that does that didn't count because I don't want it to count. <laughs> so I have to consider it all. Peter Michael Bobby. All right, he has tennis shoes that are coming out, right? He's got um, tennis shoes, and um, they are just like Kanye West's tennis shoes. They're Yeezys, right? And Yeezys tennis shoes cost hundreds of dollars, okay? But it's the same design. So some fans are like, oh, he's you know, knocking off of Yeezy, Kanye. I don't think he really meant that because right now Kanye is not in the favor of the majority of people because we know that him saying that he was going to run for president is nothing but a way to try to cipher off the black votes from um, Biden in hopes to get Trump reelected. You guys, I don't care who gets mad at me. Trump is the worst president that we've ever had in the history of this country. And I believe that the Republicans that are looking the other way with this catastrophe, with all these 130,000 
plus people dying, 130,000, 135,000 people dying and looking the other way, looking the other way, they're brainwashed. They've got to be because I mean, my goodness, how, how, and then you still supporting them? White supremacy? That, that, is that important? That you want to risk your life? And Donald's like, show me how much you love me. Come to my, my rally with no mask. Because I need to know that I'm loved. And only a few people showed up because third, two thirds of that place was empty. And he thought he was going to pack it so bad that there was going to be enough uh, people standing room only. They had to tear that set, that outdoor set down. And then the, the, the stadium he was in was only a third empty. He's a horrible president. We cannot take him for another six months. They're going to have to impeach him again. They're going to just have to impeach him again. Okay. And then the Senate is going to all have to say, no, we support him. You know, even though people are dying and the, the virus, COVID's going crazy and we're the laughing stock, we're the fools of the world. We're not the leaders of the world anymore. And you know what? I believe that Putin wanted him to be president for a reason. He did it for a reason. And the reason was to take America down. And why did Trump, I know you guys, I have to say this. Why did Trump so badly want to get rid of Obamacare? Why? Why was that so important? People getting health care? Why are you mad that people getting a way to take care of themselves? Because you knew the virus was coming and you want us to die? Because they're still trying to get rid of Obamacare. We're, we're on the verge of a catastrophe, guys. We got to get this leadership out of the White House, period. Period. Or we're all going to die. Okay, it's bad. It's bad. It's going crazy in Florida, going crazy in Oklahoma, going crazy right now in California. New York, we got to do what New York did. Thank you, uh, Cuomo. Thank you. And four to six weeks, that's all we have to do is lock down for four to six weeks. That's it. That's it. And then maintain wearing the mask, maintain social distancing, maintain um not you know being in large crowds we got to maintain those things okay but i am so mad right now i am so mad about what's going on because america may not be perfect but damn it america is doing all right and i'm an american citizen okay and this racism stuff is out of hand too but i digress for a minute but i just had to say that and i don't care anymore okay Tr trump bots can come get me or do whatever they want okay you know Gosh. All right. So anyway, so Peter Michael Bobby and the Yeezys, okay, and the, and, and the tennis shoes that he has, that which are Jackson Empire, he explained that he went to a Chinese manufacturer, the same manufacturer that um, Kanye went to in China, OEM o -E manufacturer. He went to the same one. I think he might even went to China, okay, went to the same one, talked to him. And that same manufacturer has mm -hmm. taken out Kanye's name and put Jackson's Empire in the same same tennis shoe, same tennis shoe, same manufacturer, same everything. Okay. Now, I do find that a little bit. Hmm. You know, that's kind of large, right? <laughs> right. Bobby Anderson's supposed to be some broke guy in South Carolina living in his sister's basement, according to some haters, right? Uh, no, mm -mm. no way, no way, no way. And watch a live three and four and you'll, you'll see why. Okay. The powers that this, that he has. Okay. Now, um, so with the tennis shoes, Michael was disappointed already about LA gear, right? About LA gear. Um, uh, because he had his big tennis shoe comp, um, thing, uh, um, sponsor. He was a sponsor for LA gear in the nineties. And then the allegations came down and he wanted to design his tennis shoes and he wanted to have his own tennis shoes and boom, that came and ruined the whole deal. All right. So that brings me, that brings me to um, Peter Michael Bobby on um, his, uh, let's see, let's see, let's go to this note. Let's go to this note written by Michael. Now, I'm going to give you some history of this note before I start talking. This note was presented 
in the Michael Jackson estate versus the IRS case, okay? I sat in the courtroom, you guys know I covered that trial, and that's when I got to know John Bronca, and John Bronca knows me, because I was like the only media there, you know, it was like, it was like the courtroom was like empty, but I went often, okay, and I thought it was interesting, and when it comes to Michael information, I never fall asleep, I remember everything. Anyway, there was this hater, her name is Taj Malik. yep, I'm going to say your name, and she hated the estate so much that, and claims she loves Paris Prince Blanket or any, you know, um, the, the Jackson family, Catherine, Joe, all of them. She claims that she does. Okay. In the IRS case, one of the things that they were doing, the death tax, the estate tax, how much was Michael Jackson worth on June 25th, 2009? Right? Michael didn't die. Okay. His estate has everything. Okay, um, he didn't die, but the government thinks he's dead. Okay, even though it's the wrong name, and I think if he has to pay a lot of money, he gonna come out, right? If they say, okay, you owe that whole seven hundred two million dollars, I think that's one way Michael's gonna go. Uh, you know, that's really my name is Michael Joe Jackson. I really didn't die, you know, so I really don't owe the tax, <laughs> right? Um, but um, that's that's just me. But let me tell you. That's why he sold the Sony ATV catalog. One reason why he sold the Sony ATV catalog is because the IRS said it was worth um, it was worth two point no three billion dollars, right? So that Michael's half was worth one point five million, right? Billion B B B one point five billion. Well, they sold it for what it was worth, which was seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Um, there was a clause that Michael had signed saying at a certain point, Sony, you either buy me out or I buy you out. Okay. So that time came and the estate was like, no, we don't want to buy you out. We don't want to own this catalog. And one of the main reasons for that is the Beatles catalog. There is a copyright law that says after so many years, 50, 60, 70, I don't know how many ever years, um, uh, 56 years is coming to mind maybe, um, that you reclamation is called reclamation. You can reclaim. It's hot. Look at me sweating. You can reclaim your copyrights. Okay. So Paul McCartney knew that, and he started as soon as they sold it. You know, Paul McCartney started talking to his lawyer. Beep beep beep. I need to get my 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 music back. I need to get my music back. So the catalog was declining in value anyway. Okay. Anyway. So. Um, people that don't understand appropriateness is judged by the surrounding circumstances and in the surrounding circumstances that law means you get your copyrights back after a certain amount of time okay no matter who owns them you have the right to get your copyrights back that's why we had that Beatles uh, um, movie that I, I reviewed that was with um, what's his name wearing hoax Ed Sheeran was in the movie and it was a Beatles it's a, it was a Beatles movie and they were just introducing the Beatles music to a whole new audience so that's why um, Michael decided to sell it because it was losing value anyway because Paul McCartney wanted his stuff back okay and anybody else wants their stuff back that had music that was released in the 60s okay Six, so I think it's 56 years okay something like that well anyway you guys can look it up it's called the Reclamation Act okay so, um, but, so, that's one of the things, but anyway, so they were trying to say what Michael was going to do, what was Michael's plans to do on June 25th, 2009, and they, the government want their taxes for Michael's future plans, future earnings, right? So, the state did, the state did a great job, the IRS didn't know what they were talking about because Michael's really complicated, and another thing, the reason why Michael faked his death. He got he fired everybody that was commissioned, okay, before the death announcement, and he became the sole owner of all his properties. Okay? Not a dummy by any stretch of the imagination. Okay? He prepared for all this. So anyway, so Taj Malik gave this note to the judge, also told the judge about the death hoax, because the judge looked at me and made a comment, okay? the last couple of days or the last day of trial. This note would cost Michael a whole bunch of money, okay, with the estate tax. That estate tax has not yet been decided, 
and it's been three years been since 2017 okay so I'm gonna show you this note all right so this is Michael's note okay I believe this is Michael's handwriting it was found in his house okay and um, I had seen it before and um, so the Cirque du Soleil shows could be what my I'll call whoever that is back okay so um um here we go so this here um Taj Malik tried to hurt the estate by hurting Michael okay by hurting Michael or whoever Michael's heirs are because there are certain things that I have never ever went over with you with the will and the trust that I'm not sure that I'm going to but I know I, I know how to read things and I've read them very carefully like a lawyer would read them but anyway back to this so this AEG 250 million Michael could be taxed on it he could be taxed on and, and estate tax is about 45 percent which is some BS to me okay 10 million dollars Cirque du Soleil he would owe like half of that okay because it's showing what his his deals are so we already knew about this is it that was a part of the the the, um, the he wanted 250 million that's what it made pretty much okay this is it was always supposed to be a movie okay it was always supposed to be a movie okay it was okay um, 10 cameras and then you add in Travis Payne's camera there was 11 cameras come on you paying Karen face sixty thousand dollars to do your makeup for rehearsals come on okay this is my Peter Michael Bobby see Nike deal see it right there Nike deal you see that okay Michael had it in his mind that he wanted to do something with shoes okay he's just fulfilling all his promises okay um he said he wants to hire an accountant he said caution caution with an accountant okay see it says monaco house right that's not the that's not monaco in europe princess grace monaco that is catherine's camper the monaco camper Imagine that's where Michael's been. That's where he hid out on the property uh, in Catherine's camper. That's what I believe. That he was right there with Paris Prince and Blanket, not far away, and he was lived in the Monaco camper. Because those places, Havenhurst and um, and Neverland, okay, and gotta remember William Wagner recorded some camper coming out of uh, uh, Neverland too. Monaco house camper okay there's more stuff here on this letter he says he wants a merchandising deal okay I want to sign all checks over five thousand dollars now he says he wants merchandising games we know the Game Boy okay I want the inventory now on all his auction stuff there's auction stuff and I saw Shauna at one of Michael's auctions in May with uh, Rodney Jerkins and that's where I got the interview from Rodney Jerkins okay so this note that Taj Malik gave to the judge that was gonna make the decision about how much money Michael Jackson owes the government this can cost so much money this note right here can cost so much money Blue City Al Noor and I don't know what these are, but you guys can look them up. You probably do know what those mean more than I do. But that's one of the notes. All right. All right. So I've known about this note even before um, 2017 because it was one of the notes that were found at his house. All right. Here's another note. Okay. Okay, first multi-millionaire entertainer, actor, director, a hundred billion. Okay, um, so he says better than Kelly, uh, Kelly and somebody. I'm not sure who that is. I'm sure a fan out there probably knows. And if you know, just let me know. Okay, and there is another note that I'm going to show you guys. All right, here we go. MJ announced last 
tour. Okay. The next move, movie, um, if I don't concentrate, film, no immortalization, 40 movie classics. Okay. So film classic director um, during tour. So he wanted to start working on uh, his stuff. Okay, now he, of course, he's going to put something that says he's going to be on tour because he knew he was faking his death. So he don't want to be too obvious that he's not really concentrating on the tour. He's really concentrating on a whole bunch of stuff that he's going to do afterwards. Okay, so um, immortalization. Okay, he wants, he says, if I don't concentrate on film, no immortalization, 40 movie classics. Michael was not, he hadn't even started touring yet. This stuff does not say on tour this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. That was done. In his mind, this is it was always supposed to be a movie. That was done. Okay. That was done. All right. Michael had other future projects. We found out the Michael Jackson Halloween was also something that was in the works because the guy testified, the cartoon company owner or boss or whatever, he testified and I was in the courtroom, okay? So there was other plans that Michael had. Also, um, the unreleased albums. Michael's engineer, um, um, Michael Prince, I saw him go into Neverland myself. I mean, not Neverland, hey, uh, Carol Wood myself. I saw him with my own two eyes. I didn't know who he was. He had a black Mercedes. And he went right up to the gun. I was like, who's that? Because I used to go to Carrollwood. And I would see people coming out. And I didn't see, and many, I must have been there 20 times. And I did not see Conrad Murray, that gray BMW, until the day before. Okay, and I asked Linda, who was there every day, the maps lady, who's that? And she said, I don't know. If that car came out of there every day, she would have said to me, that car comes out all the time. But she did not. She did not. Okay, I'm just saying. These are things. And then I found out a doctor was spending the night the day before the death announcement. Because I was at Carrollwood trying to check on Michael to see if he was sick the day before. Okay, and they were like, you know, a doctor spending the night. I was like, what the heck? A doctor spending the night. So I thought maybe he was going to be fine. Because a doctor had his back. I had no idea. And then I wrote, you know, the black, the plain black and the plain white t-shirts that Michael wears in This Is It. Do you know I, I sent them to him? I said, I don't know if you have anybody taking care of you. And I sent him the black and the white t-shirt that I believe that he is wearing um, 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 in This Is It. Okay. Um, and I told him, I said, if you have any problems sleeping... I know he was like, what? I said, call me. But I didn't leave my phone number, I don't think. Uh, no, because Peter said, told me, he said, you know, if you would have left your phone number, Michael probably would have called you. How'd you know I didn't leave my phone number? Because I didn't. I didn't. It was an oversight. It was an oversight. You know, you know, because you, know, you don't really think he's going to call you. So even though he was calling as Jamila, you guys, that story's in a live for So you got to watch a live for All right. So, um, um, let's see what else. Mm, so now he's got his own tennis shoes. I'm just saying he wanted a Nike deal. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, oh, 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 and guess what he posted today? Guess what Peter Michael Bobby posted today? Most of you guys know already. Most of you guys already know what he posted today. All right, give me a minute. My computer's a little slow. Oh, good. It's moving fast today. It's an old computer. It's a nice computer, but it's old. It's old. Okay, I bought it in 2008. But it was state of the art in 2008. All right. All right, so here we go, here we go, here we go. Guess what he posted today? Most of you guys already know that. Okay, let's see. Come on. Come on. It is slow. My computer is slow. 
you know, you're an old gal, you're an old gal, but you're holding up. You know, you got to talk to it and make sure it acts nice. Like when you have an old bucket car, <laughs> you got to be nice so don't act up. Remember back in the day? All right. My mother had bucket cars, you know, so um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to show you. It's almost up. It's almost up. He's letting you know. He's letting you know. All right. I'm going to turn this around. And there you go. Okay. So today, he posted about Nike shoes. As if the Nike deal didn't go through. Because the, the, the shoes are um, were picked up by... Um, Adidas, they, they, they pronounce it in this little short film that he did, Adidas for Adidas. It's Americans say Adidas, but it's Adidas, okay? Um, okay, I have someone calling me saying that MJ, his name was Paul Smith, I don't know. But you know, I'm on, I'm on camera right now. <laughs> So, um, um, I don't know. Uh, There's so many fakes out there that you guys have to be careful. The reason why I believe Peter Michael Bobby is really Michael Jackson is because of all the stuff that he's done and all the connections to the family and all, you know, I leave my house and Prince is following me on the freeway. I leave my house and I run into LaToya. I leave my house, I run into Jermaine. I leave my house, I run into Randy. It was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. And I grew up in the Valley my whole life, you know? So whoever this is, I am on live right now. All right, so anyway, so watch that just to kind of let you guys know. And then somebody shared with me and thank you, um, whoever, Kellen, and um oh, oh flash nessa flash nessa look girl look i'm gonna show you my book i'm the book you gave me the book you gave me uh the book you gave me is almost full i only have a few pages left look at that you told me i can put all my all my uh, michael jackson um hoax notes in here well i have and there you have it there it's almost full all these pages are full with notes 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 all right so i thank you i will um 77 people i will um oh my god somebody's playing games with people and they think that i don't know i'll have to handle that later um you guys there's a lot of fakes out there and um, the only person that I believe is Michael Jackson is Sofer Go From Ashes and, um, and uh, Peter Michael Bobby. That's it. Okay. And everybody who's saying, but he's Bobby Anderson, he's Bobby Anderson, he's Bobby Anderson. I know. I know. Duh. That's why I call him Peter Michael Bobby. I know they're one of the same. I know that. I've been saying that for years, even in a live three. I mean, gosh. Um, but he's Michael Jackson, too. <laughs> because why else is he paying taxes and da -da -da -da, watch your live for okay and when he calls me how come the phone comes up da -da -da -da, watch your live for all right so um anyway guys there's some stuff about uh paris um they re-released i believe these videos were done these interviews were done 2012 2013 i think and uh paris mentions the ink symbol and she mentioned something else too, but I'll leave that for the next live because I got a little bit more work to do on researching that. Okay, because I need to listen to all of it. Even though I re it's not new, the interviews aren't new. They were released when they were finished years ago. They're just re-released now, okay, because of her album and stuff, you know. Um, so anyway, guys, um, let me see. Um, oh, and then one of Michael's notes says, I'm afraid someone's trying to kill me. Evil people are everywhere. So if Michael really believed that evil people were everywhere and he was being stalked and, and, and people were trying to kill him, why would you let a doctor put you under an anesthetic without a monitor? I mean, come on. And why would you even allow yourself to go on? A, you're not, you're not traveling yet. You're not even performing yet. 
We know in Alive 2 why propovol had to be the cause of death. We know, we learned why in Alive 2, why propovol had to be the cause of death, right? Right, right? So um, it, everything fits. All the puzzle pieces and everything fits in so nicely. That's why it's called Alive 4, the missing pieces. Or, um, and then the two, the two posthumous, quote, quote, posthumous albums, Michael Escape. Come on, come on. I live on the lip, come on. So there's a lot of fans out there, and I know I'm reaching new ones because they, you know, you're crazy, you're cruel, you're mean, mind your own business. I'm an investigative reporter, and believe me, if Michael did not want me involved, after I wrote the suicide, did Michael Jackson fake his death to save his life? I wasn't invite. I I wouldn't have been invited to help promote Catherine's book, Never Can Say Goodbye, and given VIP passes. Okay. And with the promo code MJ Lives. Okay, that's an alive one. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. There's so much information. Okay, guys, there's 79 people in here. That's wonderful. So, um, and then Paris mentioned something else, and I don't, I, I didn't have a chance. 81, that is the lucky number. 81, because 8 minus 1 is 7. All right, 82. Wow, you guys. I'm so glad so many of you guys are in here. You got to put it back because. I, 84 whoa um you got to put it back because i've given so much good information out that you guys um peter michael bobby are you here are you in here are you in here but he's been working so hard and he was so excited about this these shoes have been important to him you know and um he's broken no laws um those two words on mj's list that were Hard to read word Latin. I thought it was prima facie. I thought that was based on the first impression accepted as correct until proven otherwise. You know what? I thought it was prima facie. Thank you, Micheline. Thank you so much for that. Let's see if there's something else. Okay. 85 people in here. Wow, that's a lot. The longer I stay on, the more people that come on. Let's see. Come together across the world, nations. No racism. Oh, I know. I'm so mad about what's going on with my country. It's my country too, okay? I'm so upset about it. I'm so hurt. We 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 gotta finally just admit it. That he's a failure. He he he. Trump, his successes were piggybacking off of Obama's success. This commercial where black and Latino unemployment um, was at its lowest peak. That's because Obama, especially for black people, because it's called mirroring mirroring so if you see somebody black like you that's in the highest office in the land that is the president of the united states it gives you more inspiration more ambitious more ambition and he's a great role model trump didn't put any policies in place that made unemployment giving money to the historically black colleges didn't it was kids in college not kids looking for a job okay that's the only thing that i could see that he did you know, and, and money went to historically black colleges anyway. So I think he just wanted to have one thing to where, where he can point at. Okay. Um, but the racism is out of control. The, the, the Confederate flag. Come on, guys. That was treason against the country. That was to keep human beings enslaved. That Confederate flag is an abomination on the American flag. Okay. Black Lives Matter should be a simple statement. Black Lives Matter shouldn't be a hate crime. Okay? That's what Trump, Trump is saying. It's a hate crime. I mean, come on. Let, let, we, we got to get over this racism. We just got to get beyond it. We just have to. And we got to get this imbecile, complete disaster failure of a cheater. Okay? Because the reason why I don't think he wants mail-in ballots, I'm going to tell you. Is because the cheating is in the electronics. They didn't catch it last election. So he believes the same thing will work again. The cheating is in the electronics. That's why he doesn't want mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots, people, you can trace that. If, if there's going to be any kind of fraud, you got proof where fraud can be because you got the paper ballot. You got something tangible. Okay? So... Putin wants, wanted him to be president for some reason. And it's to destroy America. And him, the MAGA hats, that's just a trick to make you think he would. And the little um, lapel and the red, white, blue suits that he wears and the tie, 
It's all game to make you think he's for America. But when it comes down to it, to fix an America, he won't do it. Don't wear masks. He finally had everybody wear masks the other day after 135,000 people had died. And where are they, the laughing stock, the failure of the world, the embarrassment because we can't get this virus under control because he thought with the Ebola and the N1, H1, um, that they just disappeared. He didn't realize, I got to say this, he didn't realize it was the work of the infectious disease um, um, committee group panel, whatever you want to call them, okay, that made sure that these viruses, previous ones, did not go gangbuster and spread all over the nation. So in his mind, it just disappeared. No, people worked to make sure that it didn't spread. Okay, people worked at that to make sure it didn't spread. Okay, also, he believed that the people that have been in government all this time didn't do anything. Now we're seeing that they kept America running. They kept America number one. They kept America the leading uh, superpower of the world. That's what the government did. Did they fix everything? No, but they kept us running smoothly. They kept the economy going. They kept all this great stuff going. The economy, Obama, uh, Trump's economy is nothing but Obama hangover. That's all it is. And, um, and black people doing better, Obama hangover. Okay, that's all that was. Obama, it was, it was the residual Obama effects. Okay, he had this one thing that he was supposed to do all on his own. And it is coronavirus. And he has failed. Period. And anybody who doesn't believe that this virus is real, I'm sorry. I am so sorry for you. I feel so sorry for you. But just in case, why don't you wear a mask? Just in case. Okay, just in case. And the mask is to protect me and you. The, uh, this stupid messaging, oh, it's for other people. Well, it's not for me too. I'm not taking in somebody's spit either. You know? And I'm not spitting into somebody else either. Okay? So, anyway, guys, I've rambled on long enough. 86 people were in here. And I just had to say my piece. I just had to say my piece. You guys... We need, a, we, we need somebody who knows government, who's been in government, who can fix the problems, who has a team of motivated, ambitious people behind him, who has friends in high places. And right now, that is Joe Biden. Period. Period. Okay, guys? We're not going to fall for the stupidity of Kanye West. Come on. He doesn't. He's a college dropout. Isn't that what he named his first album? And the second one, he named it... Um, uh, um, late registration okay it, Conrad Ka Kanye has already says he has bipolar he has mental issues bipolar I mean we gotta we gotta be reasonable we, we, we really can't play games with this right now we really gotta get our country back together because a lot of people who don't work right now highest unemployment we've ever had that don't work they don't have medical insurance I mean it is it, it can be a disaster we need, they need to impeach Trump and get him out of office in the next month because we cannot make it till January. He will have this country completely destroyed while he has his sycophants still thinking that he's doing the right thing. While we decline, decline, die, die, decline, decline, he owes Putin something. And it is the decline of America. All right, I'm gone. 88 people. Love you guys. Eight, eight and eight is six. Uh, eight and eight is sixteen. <gasps> Ninety people. Wow, today is a big day. So you guys, please watch um, the alive one, two, three, four, and a prisoner of fame is on 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 um, on uh, Amazon Prime. And um, I don't know when the DVD is coming out. Um, I might wait until live five. I'm not sure yet um, because I have to buy them like at a hundred a piece. And, um, and you know, the DVDs aren't free to me. I buy them in bulk of 100. And um, so I'm not sure yet, okay? You know, um, you guys, I, I wish everybody the best. I Stay safe, wear your mask. 
um, and social distance and um, God bless America. God bless America. Bye, y'all.